Welcome back to Hitman 3. We're getting ready to work on part 2 of 7 of the, uh, or is it 8? Of the Hitman 2 storyline. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally brokered the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold, and so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby Expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. The stakes are as high as they can get.
Sir, I will have to... You are trespassing! Please turn around. This is your standard procedure. You're clean and good to go. Don't forget, the secret of endurance racing is to keep that car going until the end. This race is not over until the clock ticks down. If you want to see the Kronstadt Bayside side. something special and the drivers are not gonna let them down. This could go down to the wire. See that red car, 47? That's the Kronstadt race car with Sierra Knox behind the wheel. No matter how burned out or beat up it may be. Listen, Miller, I don't care about your problems, all right? I made it clear this morning that if things didn't change, I'd be off the Kronstadt team. Half an hour later, I have to listen to Knox berate my skills as a mechanic because the roll cage interferes with the radio signals from Sierra's suit. No more. I'm done. Yes, I know you're a man short now. And no, I don't give a rat's ass about it. Double my salary the entire week, and I'll come back in case Sierra decides to use that last week. It's not. It's how you respond to decide otherwise. I'll be down by the paddock. Best of luck, Grace. One of the Kronstadt pit crew has quit the team in protest, and Grace Miller, the ball buster chief mechanic, is in critical need of a replacement. Why don't you step in and offer your services, 47? You're good with a wrench. Mechanic, you're now allowed inside the Kronstadt pit. I suggest you talk to Grace Miller, chief mechanic. She could probably use some extra hands. Mindful of roaming security guards. Some of them may work out you don't quite belong. Use the crowds to hide in if needed. Wrench you got injured yesterday, right? Suppose I am. Great. This is your lucky day. Do well and there's a bonus in it. Got it? Got it. All right, everyone. Look alive and get to your stations. Sierra may come in for a last-minute pit stop, and I need you ready and able. You, rookie, get into position. Grab your preferred tool and be prepared. Today's your day to shine. Let's do this. You should investigate your station, 47. 
It seems there are several ways to go about this. I suggest finding a pneumatic wrench. Any major crash, and you're not walking away from that. I couldn't have been more. a bit of maintenance. Target down. Next up, happened? Robert Zero. Knox. Folks, our new Chinese champion is on the podium in a few moments. The VIPs are gathering on the red carpet, and those of you in the stands, make sure you don't miss the big party. Hey, man, state your business here. What's up? Balls.
Thank you again for taking the time to see me, Your Excellency. I can't believe you. I've been Miss Martin since I sent that I got a good impression of her, and I'm sure you will need the same. Uh, yes, yes, right. So anyway, I am heading back. Funny anecdote, saw the Flamingo mascot backstage this morning. Turns out that before joining the Global Innovation Race, he was a mascot at the Prescott Frontiers Days, America's oldest rodeo. Yes, sir, we've had hunted a real superstar mascot. Make sure to get yourself in before the show's over. there folks almost it's time to get your cameras and your phones ready and fire away get that pure shot impress your family and friends at work Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Maxwell Rudder. I am the senior race official here at the Miami Global Innovation Race. The race is now officially over, and it's time to hand out the trophy to the winner. This year's winner proved that hard work and dedicated focus on quality wins over the flare of property and lure of empty charm. With flawless technology.
Mr. Grease Monkey. Keep it real. Oh, hello. Welcome. There are yeah. any questions between relationships, but that she has no interest in men. I mean, sure is loud. I heard something about a secret demo upstairs in the expo building, but it's off limits apparently. Yeah, rubber well duck. It's a beautiful view of Leftershire. I understood from the briefing earlier that we're just supposed to grab him if something happens to it. No poking around the engine or anything like that. Yeah, Knox is a genuine technical genius. He's really protective about his projects. Prefers to fix everything himself, apparently. Don't worry about grabbing him. If anything goes awry, you'll see him down here as fast as light. Gotcha. Robert Knox has a race car on display in the Expo building. The show staff is under strict instructions to summon him at any sign of malfunction. Apparently, Knox trusts no one to fix his car but him. Hmm. Perhaps it's time to poke around under the hood, 47. They do say one should never mess with another man's wheels. Good. I dare say this should get Knox's undivided attention. the engine off. Let's just try to get this started again. Well, that doesn't sound good. Better call Knox. Mr. Knox? Yeah, it's Smith from down at the expo. Listen, the Mark III's making some, well, just odd noises. Uh, can you come? Great. All right. Yep. Yeah, I'll be here. This is the RK Speed Mark III. This particular car is the first production unit and is identical to the one Sierra Knox has been racing these past two days. But being the very first one, it's a bit special to Mr. Knox, so he, he won't allow anyone to drive it. It's very impressive. What sort of fuel system does it use? It's a hybrid engine, partly run by electrical current and partly run on special race fuel. The dual engines serve two purposes. One boosts the acceleration of the car and the other keeps it on the track for, for extended periods. So, Batteries and good old-fashioned explosive gasoline. It's the ticket. I see. Very interesting indeed. And the rumors about the core system of the car effectively being run by an AI? Well, that's a bit of sci-fi storytelling made up in the press. Knox has a wide range of monitoring setups hooked up to the car's internal systems, but as far as I'm aware, there's there's well, no AI. Okay, okay. Page. Well, um, would it be possible for me to get a few pictures of me inside the car? For the story, of course. I'm afraid not. We've had a few incidents with people getting a little too handsy, so we've had to restrict access to the car. I'm, I'm sure you understand. Forget it. Step aside. I'm handling this myself. Uh, uh.
let's just turn the key and see. Understood. Interesting. You do not appear my visual index of security personnel attached to today's event. I must ask Kai to update me at once. I'm afraid not. We've had a few incidents with people getting a little too handsy, so we've had to restrict access to the car. I'm, I'm sure you understand. Yeah. Well, time. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade moneymen. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Phil, it's Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting him stew a little. The guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. He's pretty lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Last time I tried to have a meeting with him, he had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Ted Mendez, a defense funding consultant with the US military, is scheduled for a private demonstration of a new Kronstadt robotics project. Sounds like a way to get up close and personal with Robert Knox, 47. Mr. Mendez, good to see you, sir. The demonstration is scheduled to take place on the upper floors. Please feel free to use the stairs right over there. Mr.
Mr. Mendez? Right this way, sir. HR? Yes, it's Finn Wheeler down at the Bayside Center. Uh, listen, I realize this may sound trivial, but Falcon Soda Dispenser has been on the fifth since most days. I can't work without my hands. Hey, uh, Ted. How are you? Good to finally see you. I guess the traffic was rough. Ah, never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty, it's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this, android infiltrators operating in the field, disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary, striking an unseen fatal blow, a surgical tool for a blunt world. Imagine an army of them, fully equipped android medics seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety or patching them up then and there. Android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just pick any of the pictures on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data, and Palace will do the rest. Target acquired, WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan it just like I showed you. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead. Make my day. Ready, Mendez. Pick any image on the table and scan it to activate Palace. Target acquired. WB. Well, how's that for impressive? Amazing, I know. And just think how much more we can accomplish together. My brains, your money. The sky's the limit here, my friend. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. I still prefer the human touch. You're part of an old institution, and you prefer the traditional approach. I respect that. But like it or not, this is the future you're looking at. Autonomous synthetic systems will entirely remove human agents from direct engagement. I guarantee this thing will absolutely murder anything you put it up against. Sounds promising. So, Mr. Mendez, impressive so far, yeah? Let me quickly show you our on-site robotics lab. It's small, but state-of-the-art, and it's fully mobile, so you can deploy it anywhere. So, as part of the deal, Kronstadt will throw in one deployment cell per five units. Outfitted to enable on-site adjustments and calibrations, it'll be shipped in a bulletproof shell and can be dropped anywhere on the planet using the Kronstadt T-37 deployment drones. So if you have any questions or want to see anything again, just let me or McKinnis know. I'll let you hang out and look at everything for yourself. Hey, don't be a stranger, Ted. Collecting pictures of celebrity entrepreneurs now, 47? Hmm. What are you thinking? So, I'm hearing rumors. 
on the corporate grapevine. Apparently, Knox wants to do a large-scale field test of Palace in a few months. Huh. Well, that sounds like one of those entirely unfounded rumors that gets... spread around down at the local bar after work. A palace isn't in a state to be field tested on any scale. Well, Lyle from Outsourcing told me there'd been a request to reach out to Jin Po. I'm ready for another demonstration, please. Excellent. But let me just call Mr. Knox and bring him down here. Uh, Robert, it's Derek again. Mendez is ready for round two. You really need to get down here ASAP. give you the rundown again. All right, I think we can skip the intro part. You know why we're building this, Ted. We're building the ultimate infiltration unit. Human looking, driven by the best AI Kronstadt has ever built. A unit capable of full environmental immersion, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Palace is equipped with extremely advanced facial recognition systems, capable of complex skin texture analysis. Ultrasonic 3D information capture ensures the Jesus. Jesus. Robert Knox. Damn it. And both targets down. Command, well done, 47. Right. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon.
Berlin. Shanghai. Montreal. We're bleeding operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And <laughs> you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't, <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Ah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> If you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. Kill somebody as a flamingo. <laughs> it's a possibility, I suppose. But next time, I play that mission. It won't be on video, because if I'm going to go get all the mission stories and everything done, it'll be after I'm done with all this. Anyway, so that was fun. Both car related. I didn't expect the octane to be used in the one for the guy, I thought it would be used in the other one. And apparently, I was actually responsible for the death of somebody innocent. Um, if I'd gotten in the seat and turned it on, I would have gotten the guy right there. That's okay. I got him anyway. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. On the left, you will find the subscribe button. Please subscribe if you have not already. And the button on the right will take you to another video of mine that YouTube thinks you will enjoy. Please click the notification bell as well so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I make several a week, usually with different games. If you have a suggestion for a specific game you would like to see, please leave me a comment. And thank you.